Today, it looks like Microsoft is joining Apple and Google engaging in dark patterns to force you to upgrade. Let's talk about this. Welcome back to Switch to Linux and a Windows Wednesday where we talk about all of those fun reasons why we like switching to Linux. And today we do want to talk a little bit about the end of life for Windows 10, which is coming in October of 2025 here. And at the end of that, if your computer is not supported by Windows 11, you are going to have to get a new computer or even better, maybe just go ahead and switch to Linux. But this was a nice little one here from Windows Latest. Microsoft will intentionally slow down OneNote for Windows 10 so you leave it behind faster. Now, I mentioned in the intro, this is like Google and Apple dark patterns. Apple has long been known to, during updates, maybe mess with that battery a little bit in older phones so they feel slower so you go and buy a newer phone. Google started to experiment with some of that. There's a little bit of controversy over the Pixel 4a right now, talking about the degradation of battery life that is going on just in the last week or two. So we've seen some of that. And now Microsoft is engaging in the same type of dark pattern. Let's start making things work slower, work buggier, so that you go ahead and get the latest version. Now, remember when Windows 10 was supposed to be the last version of Windows? I actually think that Microsoft should keep supporting it until the number of people using Windows 10 organically falls under 25%. No more forcing, no more all of this nonsense. They should keep on supporting the system as long as many people are still using the system. But no, they want you to use your flashy new crap with their AI and advertising crammed in every single corner of the absolutely annoying operating system. And so, this is where we are at now. OneNote, of course, is an application used particularly a lot in enterprise, but a lot of people use it as well. I know in the writing community, a number of people use OneNote for making uh, notes. And then, of course, you can use your OneNote and sync it up and you can sync between your computer and your phone or your computer and your tablet or uh, in teams you can do between your computer and your teammates computer. So what they're going to be doing here is they're going to be making the syncing work very slow if you're on Windows 10, which will actually interfere with collaboration or teams. That is their stated goal. Now, there were three OneNote applications here. So the article here goes into some of the history. There was the old legacy version. There was a web-based and there was the Windows 11 version. They kind of merged things together, making the Windows 10 version of UWP, basically making it effectively like a web app. And then what they did is they had gotten rid of the old legacy one so you could only really get the one for 10 or the one for 11. Now, of course, since Windows 10 is going end of life in October, they are also end of lifing the OneNote for Windows 10. Now, they were using the exact same technology on the back end of Windows 10 app and Windows 11 app, but they changed them specifically so that they could start manipulating the Windows 10 version of the app to not sync. So uh, as part of the effort to have just a single OneNote, Microsoft confirmed its plans to unify OneNote for Windows 10 and OneNote for Windows. But instead of creating another app, they decided to bring over the features from the legacy app to the modern version. Then they remove the older version of the app so you don't end up installing it over the newer version, the OneNote experience. I'm experiencing a headache from all this Windows shenanigans. Microsoft promised it would not replace the older legacy OneNote app with the new version, and you'll have full control over which app you want to use. Microsoft is still committed to the promise because there's no forced migration. At the same time, they said the legacy app will continue to work. However, that is no longer the case. So the uh, according to a change in, an up, in a support document, OneNote for Windows 10 will reach end of support October 2025. Enterprise customers should switch to OneNote, switch from OneNote for Windows 10 to OneNote on Windows, which is available in the Microsoft Store and with a Microsoft 365 subscription. 
So as they continue to enhance OneNote with a unified and modern experience, we want to remind you that OneNote for Windows OneNote for Windows 10 will reach end of support October 14th, 2025. And these uh, Microsoft officials said in a statement on Windows latest. So what they're doing now is anybody who keeps using the old version that you wanted to keep using because, you know, everything works. Microsoft cites several reasons to migrate from the legacy version. This includes security features like Microsoft information protection, access to Copilot, oh joy, and other AI features, faster performance, but faster sync. Now, the old, remember, the old syncing method was the exact same protocol, but they cre recreated a new system for Windows 11 so they can intentionally tinker with the version on 10. OneNote, which is designed for Windows 11, has the same technology as the legacy, so how's it going to sync faster? Turns out Microsoft plans to reduce the performance of the legacy OneNote app so it runs slower and syncs your notes late. This is in their support document. In June 2025, OneNote for Windows 10 version will sync notes slower than the modern version. Starting in June, quoted, users of OneNote for Windows 10 will experience slower sync performance, impacting real-time collaboration and multi-device access. Microsoft notes in July 2025. If you still choose to keep using OneNote for Windows 10, you'll be seeing prompts and banners urging you to switch to the, of course, the subscription version in the Microsoft account. So here you have a perfectly fine working operating system. It's not even end of life yet. They are going to start slowing you down inside of two or three months to force you to upgrade to a new version, even though technically your system is still supported. Now, as I said at the beginning, they should continue to support Windows 10 until the number of organic Windows 10 users drops. Now, I'm okay if they don't make the installation media as easy to find or if they're not allowing people to sell new computers with it. Okay, I generally, like, I get it. I'll go ahead and concede that point. But as long as I have a Windows 10 computer that continues to function, they should continue to support it until that number drops to a lower number. Because right now, the only reason Windows 11 is going up and Windows 10 is going down is because people are forced to migrate. Many people forcing to do so in a very expensive climate right now. Our food pot costs are higher than they've been. Our gas prices are higher than they've been. Electronics prices are higher than they've been. Now, fortunately, under some of the new policies, some of those prices are coming back down. Not all of them. In other words, so a lot of people are still recovering from not having as much money as they've had. And now Windows says, well, yeah, you got to ditch your perfectly fine working computer for a new one because we're just not going to support it anymore. And now they're using the common apps that people are using and forcing people off of those onto different versions specifically so they can nudge them into the system that they want them in. This is a dark pattern which should be illegal. I mean, I'm I'm saying that I'm not I'm for I'm not much for much government regulation, but this is the type of stuff that is nonsense. They said Windows 10 is the last version. They should be held to Windows 10 as the last version. OK, or if they're going to change that, you can't be forcing anybody off of it. There you go. So what is uh, much more secure about Windows 11? Eh, there's a few things. A lot of those security models are implemented on Windows 10. That's fine, you know, uh, but a lot of them are things that are forced and are not making this computer world any better. Remember that MFA was good. Multi-factor authentication is going to prevent hackers from getting the accounts. No, they just steal the MFA keys. <laughs> it's, it hasn't solved any problems. So this whole idea that we're engaging in, all, it, it's, it's utter nonsense in, in all honesty. So that is uh, where we're going to leave this one. Of course, if you uh, if you are interested, you should have a look at looking at Linux instead. Of course, I recommend switching to Linux Mint if you do not need all these functions. And you can use the web-based version of OneNote on Linux Mint just fine. You can continue to use your old hardware, particularly if you're using the web app-based versions. They'll work. 
um, a modern uh, desktop environment like GNOME. Uh, I think Plasma, possibly. I know GNOME and Cinnamon. You can still sign in with your Microsoft account. You can still sync files. You can still do all those types of things. So looking at Linux as a viable solution for some people is certainly an option. Now, not everybody can switch, but a whole lot more people can switch than you think. And that is what my ultimate message is as we examine what Windows is doing, engaging in dark patterns, getting people to ditch their perfectly fine operating systems for other stuff. So there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.